I be trying to understand and have faith, but who really makes these rules? Like, it's a time and a place for everything. I understand that, but who really makes that? Oh, you have 15 months or a year to get a house and do this and do that not knowing what a person going through or finances or mental or um, life is set up. Who, who really makes these rules and stipulations and you must obey by them if you never walk in a person's shoes or been through what a person been through it's not an excuse it's just a fact of a matter how can one person judge another without being able to walk and live what they've been through like 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 is no second chances, is no understanding, is no compassion or or anything anymore. It's it, it, that's what I feel like. And the only reason I'm saying these things is my children were taken away from me because I went to a dentist office and then went to my friend's house and came back to my home where my baby father was left at because he came to my house to smoke marijuana and to see his daughter because he was playing Russian roulette with dialysis and didn't want to obey by the hospital rules that you're supposed to go to dialysis three times a week and um, he was very angry at life and people and disappointed so he played Russian roulette with his with his health and people around him that cared about him so he He was passive aggressive, not physically abusive, but verbally abusive and angry because of whatever he went through in life. But he was a good man and had good intentions and was just hurt by everyone around him. So he came to my house to a person that he thought was supposed to love him back, which is me, which I did, but didn't know how to fully love him the way he's supposed to be. All I knew how to do was take care of him and make sure he went to dialysis and set up appointments and and even and even lied for him when he didn't want to go to dialysis or whatever because maybe it made him feel weak I don't know what, it, what the matter was but he wanted me to lie for him because he didn't want to go he wanted to play video games and smoke weed and 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 buy sneakers and clothes and and he was just young and learning and surviving and then got thrown with a sickness and he didn't know how to grasp that and then 
I didn't love him fully. And I had another child on him. By another man, whatever, that preyed on young, drug addict families, dysfunctional families, or whatever, because he wasn't loved proper, so he used his money and things to manipulate young women. Mm -hmm. And I lashed out and, and used him for what he was worth, an apartment to provide for my children and my sick baby father. And he helped us all out. And we made things work. But then I guess the law says that we're dysfunctional and unfit because all we wanted to do was survive and provide and help one another. So I guess we're judged and it's a time limit to get things right. I guess that's what the world says or whatever, whether you're dysfunctional or not. So I guess they say you didn't love your children enough. No, we did. We provided, we clothed them. Shots was up to date. Um, I thought they were happy. I would hope that they was happy, safe, and sound, and not in harm's way. You know, drugs was used around them, and um, no marijuana, no nothing was used around them. And that um, we made sure that Samaj Shaylin and sincere was clothed happy I went to school but Miss Shirley and Mr. Charles were stereotyped and painted a picture of something different offered for um a check they will fight you every way in a way or whatever that this is cause, cause you calling even with with the um with the obstacles that came your way and you're telling them like you're gonna do whatever it takes to be part of your children life no matter if the if the time limit was up you're gonna keep calling you're gonna keep building a relationship with your children you you're gonna keep that up you're gonna keep that up no matter what the court say. So am I, am I wrong or delusional or naive? And this is not hypothetical. This is real. Shannon Chanel Marcel, the mother of Samaj, Nasir Moon, I mean Nasir Marcel, Shaylin Sana, Denise Moon, Sincere, Marcel Cause that's what it should have been Sincere It should have been Sincerely A second chance but listen to air. And it should be sincerely noted that I love y'all. Love each and every one of y'all. No more than nothing. Love them. And I appreciate Ms. Shirley, Mr. Charles. I appreciate Camilla Henry. For high fast job, that's my DHS worker. 
of not telling me about a mommy and me program or anything. And I, 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 I sincerely appreciate the Department of Human Services if my children are being taken care of properly. And I'm not being facetious, but I'm very angry and disappointed in the way the system is set up. Of they so fighting for reunification of the parental parents, but they not really, really trying to help or trying to use all outlets. Because if you see that Ricky Nelson is doing all kind of shenanigans and y'all investigated and y'all took his um, unsupervised business away because of what Samaj Marcel said that um, he was he was not really with Ricky Nelson that he was with his mother too and all that because he's not taught to lie and all them things once y'all saw that you you, you should have reached out and, and, and said to the parental mother and gave her the outlet of a mommy and me program. It shouldn't have took her to go to Gerard Medical to find that out with the caseworkers there and reach out to Camilla Henry and then she says it's too late when she never put that on the table <laughs> but did her job. If we're talking about jobs and rules and regulations. And, and and what 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 we're aiming for is reunification with the parental parent. If if, if we go by law and and what they really really mean and what they really really aim it for. Hmm. It's just facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's no pity party. Like, I done found my mom dead of an old dead heart attack. And, like, the landlord intentionally moved me in the same building that I found my mom dead in after I told her that I wanted the other apartment that was down the street. So she intentionally did that at the uh in Williamsport PA so I don't know if that was like her being smart and trying to make me wake up or whatever I don't know I don't call that racism or nothing maybe that was her trying to make me wake up or whatever but even then that 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 that, that was not making me wake up that that was making me go harder and go harder and go harder and, and still try to help other friends in the process, even take homeless people that I didn't even didn't know off the street to fucking, because they was waiting for their ride the next day and just still try to help other people when I was needing help myself. And that's no brownie points. It's just, where is the, I'm just using that it's a scenario because where is the compassion and 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 the genuineness in the world? And they could say money is the root of all evil, cause people would do anything for a check and pay any type of picture for a check. But I don't I don't do nothing for money. I do this cause I'm generally a helpful person even when I'm in need and help. I will still give you the shirt off of my back, give you the clothes off of my back, and walk the world naked until I find another outfit. And that's just who I am as a person. And just because I am that way don't mean other people are that way. And I'm grasping that. And I'm learning that. But that still don't make me angry. That just make me disappointed. Because I truly believe that if we all stick together, you would gain more. 
That's what I believe. All lives matter. Not just black lives, white lives, brown lives. I think I believe all lives matter. And I believe, yes, black people went through stuff. White people go through stuff. People go through stuff. But I believe we should all go through it and stick together and build one another up and voice and voice how we feel instead of instead of hurting and harming one another. Come up with some type of solution to the problem. That hand. And there shouldn't be a time limit on on growth and change. That's what I believe. It shouldn't be a time limit on growth and change. It shouldn't be a measurement. Because God died for our sins. And that statement alone. He was willing to die for us to grow and prosper and elevate. That statement alone should be enough.